Welcome to this demonstration of GraphWare Hume. Hume is a graph-powered insights engine. It's an ecosystem built upon the combined power of collaborative knowledge graphs and machine learning. It blends heterogeneous data, both structured and unstructured, from various different data sources and extracts actionable insights. Today we will take it easy. and We will leave machine learning and natural language processing aside. We will only use simple structured data to demonstrate how Hume can help governments keep their countries safe. More specifically, we will focus on contact tracing during the current coronavirus crisis and show how a so-called smart quarantine could be implemented using Hume. Let's jump right in and look at our schema, which really represents our domain model or the problem we're trying to solve. We're going to be working with people. People have a national ID, a name and a risk score. This is how much they are at risk of being infected. People have contact with other people, either family, regular contact or ad hoc contact. People can take flights. Flights originate from airports and they land at other airports. These airports can be located in countries. So I'll just demonstrate here how easy it is to modify this schema. So and this airport is located in a country and we're gonna have an icon here earth and we're going to have three attributes here a country will have a name it will have a code and it will have a risk which will be low medium or high people can test for coronavirus either positive or negative people can unfortunately pass away and people can be informed either that they're at risk or that they have been quarantined people have phone numbers and these phone numbers or these phones more specifically they ping cell towers people live at addresses and we have companies that are located at addresses people have credit cards in this data set they will have zero to three credit cards and they transact with these credit cards at the companies most of this data is generated so it's completely fake the real parts of the data will be countries airports flights cell towers and addresses. These will be addresses and cell towers from the Czech Republic. You may not have all of this data when you're dealing with this use case in real life, but that's okay. We can deal with partial data. And also you may have other data that we haven't demonstrated here. For example, people's occupations, people's ages, and so on. Let's look at Graphware Orchestra, which is a workflow engine and orchestration of getting the data into the graph, into the knowledge graph, into a single source of truth. Here, this looks complicated only because we have quite a few data sources. You will see we have uh, cell towers reader, movements reader, and all kinds of other readers here for all the kinds of data that we have. And all this data will be transformed with a simple query and loaded into the graph. We also have a automated mechanism to update the state that people are in that is positive negative informed quarantined or deceased and every 30 seconds we'll also recompute people's scores if i start this workflow engine i just want to show you how easy it is to get data in so these boxes on the left side they read files from a given location automatically they can also read from Kafka queues, S3 buckets, any other place. And these files uh, in our demo are CSV files, comma separated values. So you can imagine those as Excel sheets, for example. But Hume Orchestra is capable of reading all kinds of other file formats. So I'm just going to upload a file here with addresses. First of all, I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's a good old comma separated value with real check addresses. And if you prefer, you can of course view it as an Excel spreadsheet. We're gonna drop this file to our S3 bucket. And we're gonna watch Hume process these addresses when the, uh, it picks up the file. So this is finished now. It's imported uh, nearly 10,000 addresses into the graph. Let's look at the actual knowledge graph and take a look at 
first of all, what we have in here. So we have about 800,000 cell towers. We have about 10,000 people. And we have some relationships between these entities. So here, for example, we have cell phones pinging the cell towers. There's over 1 million of those. We have people taking flights. There's 2,100 and so on. If we want to take a look at the first new feature, which is displaying charts, we can, for example, take a look at what's the breakdown of people's states in the system right now. So most people, they have an unknown state, so they haven't tested for coronavirus. We have a few quarantine people, some positive, almost a thousand, over 3000 negative, some people that we've informed they're at risk and a few deceased people. We can also have a look at how the positive cases evolved over time in our hypothetical case. But let's jump right into the graph and have a look at what kind of people we have and how they're represented in this visualization. So here, these are all people. That, uh, there's 10 out of the 10,000 people. And I want to use this to demonstrate the kinds of people we have or the states that they can be in. So first of all, the red ones, they're the ones that have been tested positive for coronavirus. So here we can see this person has taken a test and it was positive and it was on the 27th of March. We have orange. They are people who have been quarantined. We have the green icons. They are people who have taken negative coronavirus test, more specifically people who whose last test was negative. So here, the positive ones was, this was 20, 20th of March. This one is 19th of March, but this one is 27th and this one's 21st. So this person has two consecutive negative tests. The red circle represents the risk score. So in this case, Vanessa has 78 points. This is computed using a graph algorithm, simple traversals, it's near real time. And we can use graph traversals also to explain that level of risk. So in case of Vanessa, she has been in direct regular contact with quite a few people who have tested positive. She has also been indirectly in contact with people who have tested positive. This is why her risk score is relatively high. Let's have a look at another person and explain why she is at risk. So in this case, this person has actually transacted at stores with her credit cards and we can see that an infected or positively tested person has also transacted at those shops. More importantly, this timestamp on the transaction, so this credit card transacted at this company on the 11th of March at around 1.47, this credit card has transacted on the same day at around 134. So there's a risk that these people actually saw each other in the store or touch the same credit card machine or something like this. Let's have a look at another reason. This is hypothetical why this person may be at risk. Her phone pinged the cell tower on the 18th of March at 1617. And there's a person who has tested positive her phone or his phone ping the same cell tower on the 18th of March, same day around 16.08. So this is why this person has this risk score. Let's have a look at one more. Martina Wolf. She is at risk purely because she's had some contact with positively testing people. So let's do one final one. This person, by the way, has the green dot because she has been informed that she's at risk. And she's at risk because, again, she's had some contact with people and she's been transacting around the same time in the same store as another person who has uh, tested positively. What we can do is to have a look at top 10 people who are at risk. So these are very high risk people. Most mostly because they probably have some infections in the family. So they score very, very high. And what we can do with these people is we can 
quarantined some of them as of let's say 30th of March so these now have been quarantined and we can actually inform these people that they are at risk so I'm just going to do that and I'll just do one by one inform this one person about the fact that they're at risk so now we can see this person is informed we can take a look at since we're implementing smart quarantine what we can do is we can take a look at people who are quarantine offenders so people who should be quarantined but they're doing something that breaks the rules so in this case this one is a is a big offender the score is quite high the, uh, this is uh, 166 but let's look at some other one so for example this person is a quarantine offender so we'll explain again using graph traversals why and we will see that this person has been quarantined I'm just gonna look at this event since 28th of March but has been transacting with her, with her, with her credit cards in this case on the 30th of March this case 28th later and so on so this person is breaking the rules here's a, a big offender see what uh, the reason is for that and then we can see okay this person this is his home home address but he's been pinging his phone has been pinging all these cell towers so we can have a look at the random one here and see that this is 48 kilometers away from his home that means he's not really at home let's look at one final offender so for example take this and again we can see a ton of credit card transactions later occurring later than this person was quarantined the other thing we can do is to have a look at risky returns these are people coming to the country returning on flights from risky countries so in this case this country should have been red but it's not so we will fix that for countries with high risk we will see them as a red color so here we can see all these people that that were on this flight uh, that arrived from Vienna Airport which is located in Austria uh, a risky country finally let's uh, take a look at Mickey Mickey Metz this person uh, has an unknown status but let's assume that he has tested positive let's say on the 19th of March so this data can come in externally of course from some data dumps from testing uh, places and so on but we can do that manually as well but what we would like to do now is to actually show who should be informed about the fact this, this person has tested positive and we can see a bunch of people that this person has been indirect in direct or indirect contact with for instance um, here again by transacting in a store where another person was transacting around the same time here are some people that have been in the proximity around the same time of this person and then of course there are some contacts here if we would wanted to inform these people we could run another query here to actually see who to call about this fact and inform them inform them that Mickey Metz has been testing positive um, and so here we have a list of all people we should phone up and tell them they're at risk this concludes our demonstration thank you for watching if you found the demo interesting please get in touch thank you